You are joining Making a Difference with Melissa Clark, a new show that shares the compelling stories and voices of well-known and everyday people who change the world in big and small ways. Enjoy our guests. Call in or just listen to be inspired for this show was made with you in mind. Please join us every Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with our special guests. And you can listen to our recast at www.melissaclarkshow.com. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us here on a Saturday. I hope everybody's doing good, staying safe, staying calm. Uh, I'm trying the best that I can. Yesterday, I actually went for my first food run in about two weeks, and uh, we know it's it's been getting worse. So um, this is what I look like. So that's what I look like going food shopping. I was actually petrified. Uh, so. People are actually petrified of me, but you know, as they say, keep your hand, you know, your mouth and your nose closed off. I actually ended up covering my hair uh, just in case of anything, and I changed my gloves um, a couple of times, as they say. You know, if I went in and out of the stores, I'm touching my steering wheel, uh, and I changed my mask about two times as well. And I went to Home Depot and got goggles uh, just so everything is covered up. But I actually, I wanted to share with you guys that I received a couple of naughty looks from people. And um, it was, uh, it was, you know, it was very hurtful <laughs> because I care for your health. And this is what they're telling us to do is to keep our eyes covered, our mouths covered and our hands covered. Um, with, you know, you want to make sure you're not doing cross contamination as well. So you got to change those gloves out. But uh, two stores that stuck out to me, I went over to uh, the postal service. And I apologize to the teller for what I look like. And she actually thanked me. She goes, thank you so much. There's not that many people who are doing this. Uh, then the second one, I went over to the supermarket. Now here in New York City, we have to wait in line now, which is great. I waited for about eight to 10 minutes and I got in. I saw this woman, she had to be about 19 to 20 years old, walking around, no gloves, no no, um, no mouthpiece, nothing. And she's eating food as if she was proud walking around. I mean, I think it should be the responsibility of the supermarket to kick somebody like that out because you, you don't know if you're a carrier. I don't know if I'm a carrier. That's why I'm going to look like this because I don't know what's going on. I don't know, we don't know anything about this disease. Uh, we could find more information about it. So this is the way I looked and, uh, and that's all I have to say about that. And I kind of went on a rant yesterday on uh, Facebook and I apologize for my foul language, but I was really upset and I was really hurtful. People were looking at me as if I was like the Corona, you know, and, but I'm doing this for all of our safety. And when you do go out, I, I would hope and pray that this is what you look like uh, when you go for your, your food run. So I, with uh, that being said, <laughs> I have um, Monsign Monsignor John on the phone. He's an amazing man. He's uh, our family priest. And I wanted to do a, uh, start the show off with a quick, uh, quick prayer. And he is at uh, St. John, St. Jude uh, Shrine, which is at 1677 Canarsie Road. And people actually provided some names to me. So I'd like to mention those names before we start the prayer. I have Giuseppe Giacomoso, which I probably am saying that name wrong. And I apologize if I say the names wrong. Um, Crocofusa Seminaro, Rose Farina. Uh, Perry Burnside. These people are in the past. God bless them. God bless your soul. You're in our prayers always. These are the Corona related people um, that I wanted to mention uh, along with these other souls that, that are in heaven. Um, Catherine Pace, uh, she recently passed away. She was my old neighbor's mother. And, uh, and you know, we love you, Mike and Marisol. Uh, Eugene Shirabunini, he is sick at the moment. Uh, he's in the hospital. Um, I think he's in the hospital. I'm sorry if, if he's not. Uh, um, Maureen, I'm sorry, but he is sick. Anthony um, Quasi, he's in the hospital and, uh, and we're praying for him all the time. I know his uncle, uh, legendary DJ Joe Quasi, so he's in our prayers. Dr. Contristano, who is our family uh, physician, he's our 
sorry, that's okay, Barry. Um, he's our family physician. He is actually in a coma right now. So we are uh, sending you prayers, Dr. Contrastano. We love you. And there's a gentleman that I saw on my Facebook, Nick Cordoro, and it's a, a lot of my acting friends know him, and I believe he's an actor, and I don't believe he's doing very well right now. So he's all in our prayers. With that being said, uh, Monsignor John, the, the floor is all yours if you can just kindly give us a prayer. Thank you. You're ready for me now? Yes, sir. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Okay. All right. I, I just want, can I mention something first before I say the prayer? Yes, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that's happening here in the Brooklyn Diocese right now is that all the churches that have bells have been asked to ring them every day at 3 o'clock, okay, until this thing is over, okay? Okay. And the reason for this, you know, 3 o'clock is a significant thing for us because that's the day when uh, Jesus died on the cross. That's the time when Jesus died on the cross. And if we hear the bells, we are asked to please pray. You know, pray for those who are sick from the, from the coronavirus and, um, and those people who are taking care of them, the healthcare workers in a hospital, you know, take time and pray, you know, and we've got to push heaven and earth to get this thing over with. That's All right? right. Yes, sir. Thank you so, so much. I'd, I'd like to offer this prayer now, okay? Yes, please. Let's pray. Almighty and eternal God, our refuge in every danger, to whom we turn in our distress. In faith we pray. Look with compassion on those afflicted by the coronavirus. Grant eternal rest to the dead, comfort to mourners, healing to the sick, peace to the dying, strength to healthcare workers, wisdom to our leaders. Though we cannot be physically close to others, Give us the ability and courage to love as well as we can, since perfect love casts out all fears. When this pandemic has passed and when this frightening crisis is resolved, teach us to know you more closely as our dearest friend and our only hope. And we ask this in your name, O oh loving Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Father. And uh, you, um, St. Jude is always looking for donations at this time. Any church is actually looking for donations. So you guys can keep the, um, you know, the, the church alive. Is that right? Uh, that's correct. You okay. know, it's tough times for all of us, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know. Uh, hopefully everything will work out here and thank you so much for everything that you've done for the community and tomorrow's Palm Sunday so we wish you a, a wonderful Palm Sunday and you'll be on tomorrow um, at 9 o'clock you'll have a live mass that's right we have 9 o'clock on on, uh, on Facebook at, at uh, St. Jude Canarsie I'll um, be watching everyone joins us yeah, I'll be watching and I'll start a watch. Uh, you do like a watch live on Facebook. So I'll share that with my friends and hopefully uh, we'll get a lot of people. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Father Monsignor John. You're the best and, uh, and we'll talk okay. to you soon. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Thanks. So long bye. Now. Okay, bye. Thank you so much. <laughs> Karina, how are you? <laughs> Do we have Karina? Leon. Hi, how are you? Thank you so much for your patience and waiting. Can you hear me okay? <laughs> yes, I can hear you. There you are. Hi. Okay. How are you? You're gorgeous. This is Karina Consonou. Did I say that right? Cousineau. Cousineau. I interviewed your sister-in-law yesterday. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah, Dr. Tara. She's lovely. Yes, she is, and she loves you. <laughs> so uh, she was very helpful. So we have Karina on today, and she is a dressmaker. She is a fashion designer, and she's doing something so wonderful. Um, tell us what's going on 
um, as far as let's let's talk about your dresses first then we'll go into why we have you on the show and how you're making a difference during this time uh, so you actually make dresses for all types of women shapes which I totally love because everybody likes to feel beautiful you know big small tall short so what you understand you understand our mission and our brand statement for sure um, you know prior to starting Karina dresses I worked in the corporate fashion world and if you were not uh, size eight, it was very limited. You were kind of out of luck. And that made me really sad because there are a lot of women who wanted to feel comfortable in their own body, including myself. So I left that company and I started making dresses for myself. And then I had friends that said, oh, I want a Karina dress. You know, that looks comfortable and for our busy everyday life. And um, that's kind of how it all started, just listening to women and knowing that there's lots of women who want to accept themselves uh, exactly how they are. And I that's love really, it. Yeah, that's joyful and loving for sure. Yeah. I love it. So what is your background in fashion? Um, when did you start? When did you, start uh, when did you know that you wanted to get into fashion? I always loved clothing. And um, my mom, I was raised, my mom sewed most of my clothing she taught me how to sew and then i had friends that i would ask advice but i'm pretty much self-taught and that's how it all started i just with a need and a desire to i didn't really like making uh clothing that was fussy so all of my dresses don't have zippers or buttons they you know you throw it on like a t-shirt and you wash it in the washing machine uh so it's just like very easy um we're so busy in our lives and we need something that works for us. I love it. And it's very old fashioned. Your, your dresses are kind of vintage looking to me. You know, that a, lot, a lot of people say our dresses are vintage inspired. Mm -hmm. I like to say that they're classics. And then when you have a classic dress, it never goes out of style. So it's not just like a one hit wonder you wear, you know, some of our customers say, I've had my dresses, you know, I have one from circa, you know, 2010 and, and, and that's great because we really want our product to be a value for someone that you can just keep wearing. And how do your customers feel? What's the feedback that you get? So say if you have a woman who's, um, I don't know, size 14, you know, and she says, thank you so much for making me feel beautiful. You know, I could wear your beautiful dresses. Like what's the feedback that you get from women? I think that's one of the reasons I keep making dresses are those comments. You know, I have um, a one woman just wrote to me and she said, you know, I just went through a divorce and I'm on the dating scene and I feel confident because I have my Karina dress. Mm -hmm. You know, someone else says, I just had a baby. Thank you for making me feel comfortable in my body and feeling pretty. And then we have mostly ladies that will say, you know that more, every woman knows that pile of clothes that you throw to the side because it, it wasn't quite right. Uh, women call our dresses their go-to dress. They're like a good friend that's just there and fits the same way. You just have to decide what shoes you're going to wear. So it's it looks, all positive. It's really, really fun. Yeah. It looks very comfortable, your dresses. What, can, what kind of material is that? It looks very comfortable. We use a microfiber blend. Uh, we design all our own prints, but um, so they're breathable, they're washable, they never need ironing. We've been doing this for about 12 years now, and we do know that if you buy one, they always buy another. So we have a lot of repeat customers, and we call it, you know, our tribe of ladies that we're there for you, we listen to you. And that was very different in the corporate world. We're making dresses for the ladies and listening to them. So it's kind of a win-win. And what about the designs? Like you have your, you have like uh, feathers on yours. I could see that. And some designs, um, what's that, Paisley? Is that Paisley? Right. So we have about 12 different styles. Mm -hmm. And then we design, we design our prints and we do this all, everything is um, made in the USA. And we've been a USA-made company. We design our prints and we print all of our fabric in Los Angeles. So we have about 12 styles and then we have, you know, a dozen prints and a new collection every single month. So we keep mixing it up so there's always something new. 
Oh, I love it so much. And now the pockets, with pockets too. We have the ladies always saying, "A dress with a pocket is so great." Oh um, yeah. So we're putting pockets in most of our dresses, and some are midi length, some are um, all the. You know, we just listen to what you want because we are made in the United States. We can change up our production and and do that re readily. It's really fun. Yeah. And you have a store in um, Kingston, is that correct? We do have a store in Kingston, but we're primarily an online business. Mm -hmm. um, KarinaDresses.com, open 24-7. Uh, we, you know, we could, you know, I do want to offer your listeners to sign on to our newsletter for a 15% discount, and then we're giving away, we're selecting a few random um, subscribers to give a free dress to. So subscribe this weekend and you're going to get a gift and you'll hear all about us. That's so wonderful. We're going to need a dress after all this, after we get out of quarantine, <laughs> we're all going to go nuts and go out and dress pretty. And Well, you know, some ladies say, um, you know, when you would normally come home from work and take your clothes off and say, I got to get into my sweatpants. I, one woman said to me once, oh, you know, your Karina dress is my sweatpants. I come home and I stay in it because it's so comfortable. And I knew what she meant. You don't have to uh, slip into your cozies because you're already in your cozy. That's right. They do look very comfortable. I, I, I can't wait to try mine on. <laughs> you know, I'm sending you one. You just have to check it out and let me know. We're Abs appreciative to be on your show. Thank you. Uh, oh, thank you so much for, for everything that you're doing. Now you're doing something very special for people. Unfortunately, uh, you had to put your store on hold and everybody else because of what's going on. So tell us what you're doing uh, that's making a difference in this world to people. So I realized straight away, looking at the news, that we were gonna need masks and we didn't have a supply. And I had fabric that was appropriate and I spoke to the governor and the county office and I tried to initially get a contract for my sewers to keep them in business, but I, I was unable to do that. So we just decided to take matters into our own hand and cut and distribute to local sewers and make masks ourselves. So everything is donated and volunteers. Last week we uh, distributed, we distributed a thousand masks to sewers, then they went out to hospitals. And this week we just cut 3,000 masks. So we just felt like I have the, I have the resources and the know-how and the community is really, really stepping up. And I think this is giving, empowering us in a way where we feel so, we know we can stay home, but we want to do more. And we know masks are saving lives. So, you know, the sewers say, thank you so much. This is, this is making me feel like I'm making a difference together. I'm sorry. I just kind of choke up a little bit. It's okay. It's, 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 it's a it's, tough time. Yeah. It's a, it's tough, a tough time. time. And we have so many requests from so many hospitals. It just feels really great to be able to fulfill them. Absolutely. And you're doing such an amazing job. And, and thank you so much. My God. Can you wear some of our masks? Please? Yes, please. Oh, how cute. <laughs> so you're, you're, and you're taking masks. And this is another one that we're making. The doctors are requesting, therefore, uh, the, to go over the N95 mask. Yes. To prolong the life. Oh, my kitty's grabbing the ties. <laughs> so that one goes like that. That's okay. Easy. And, um, how cute. This one goes, and they're all 100% cotton, and you're able to wash them, and that will prolong the life. And the other ones are more for, like, when you're going out shopping, it's got a little pocket. Yeah. Yes. A filter in. And we're just, anybody who's asking, we're getting the mask to them. Um, as long as the fabric holds out and we can keep sewing, we're going to just continue doing it. That's really amazing. Um, my question to you is, are you using the fabric from your dress? Like, what, where did you get the fabric from? I think Dr. Tara said that uh, somebody's actually helping you with fabric. I, I had some cotton fabric that was in um, my studio because we don't use cotton, and I donated about 1,000 yards. And then my supplier in Los Angeles donated another 2,000 yards. And mm -hmm. And they also sent us elastic for making um, some of the flat pleated ones. 
so everyone's re you know everyone's donating and doing the best they can um, yeah uh, we're hoping that the supplies keep coming we are um, now receiving some people who say listen I don't sew but can I give you some money for shipment or can I help um. for your next um, sewing you know you're cutting we cut once a week we don't know how long this is going to go on but now I think it's really great that everyone is wearing masks or starting to. I had the same thing happen to me when I went into the store with a mask. I asked the local supermarket, hey, would you like me to give masks to all your workers? And they said no. And I was just so, up. I was like, <laughs> but they said, because it scares people. And I said, this is something I'm doing for you. Um, so I really want to make it popular. Like wearing a mask is the new look. It really is. Um, you know, that really bothers me that you just said that. That really bothers me. Sorry. I'm not to no, be. I, no, no, you're not being, you're not being anything. It's just, it, it's bothersome because this is, this is our new norm. And this is the reality that we're in. And in order for uh, this to prevent from stopping from spreading, we need to do the right thing. Right. And if you have fashionable, beautiful, you know, covers for your face. It's so easy. It's so easy to be safe. First, we stay at home. And then, like yourself, we go out minimally every two weeks or we have things delivered. Yeah. But I initially started thinking about all of those people that are in shops that are allowing us to be home. You know, they're doing the curbside deliveries. The That's right. And the restaurants that are doing deliveries. I was like, those people need um, support. And to find out that the owners of those stores were so reluctant. It's as if don't put a mask on and it's not going to be there. I don't think being tone deaf is appropriate. So I did kind of get in their face and I said, you know, this is ridiculous. I'm not asking for money. I'm out of work and I'm giving That's right. you. That's right. Now let me, let me ask you one quick question. Uh, like at the, at your in Kingston, right? You're in Kingston, New York. Mm -hmm. So that's about two hours away from us here. I'm in Brooklyn. Um, uh, it, it, the counter people, are they wearing masks when they're cutting your deli? They're not. You, they're not. They have, they have plastic shield guards in front of them, and they think that's enough. No. Um, I'm not buying food. I mean, I'm buying, you know, those packaged um greens and I'm very careful because I see the people putting out the produce with bare hands um I just feel like there's an obligation you know to the public to educate everyone and say you know a, a plastic um shield is not enough your hands are exposed mm -hmm. um I, I don't get it it makes me really mad <laughs> Makes me it makes, really sad. Yeah, it makes it makes me very upset as well. But uh, we can't force people to do what they don't want to. They're they're afraid. I mean, I, I don't. They're either uneducated or they're afraid. But w this is never going to end. So we, I don't know. Something has to happen. I'm I'm hoping and praying that they put us in quarantine for two weeks. Everything gets shut down. Shut the lights off at, at Times Square. Shut the lights off in in Las Vegas. Shut everything down. Keep our homes working. Mm -hmm. Give us a couple of weeks to go ahead and do, get what we have to get. Mm -hmm. No chaos is involved. Do we have to do and stay home for two weeks? Right. I would so, think that, you know, anybody who can receive delivery, I feel I lived in Brooklyn for 15 years. I, yes. And I know what it's like down there. I feel very, very lucky to be in the country with some space. But we have local farmers that are delivering. I know in the city, too, Instacart, Hub Grub, all these things are available. Just stay home unless you absolutely need to. It's so, it's so important. I want to, you know, I know I, I'm sounding like a broken record like everyone else, but we just have okay. to remind everyone that um, it's not just, it's for everyone else. You know, we're in this together. That's correct. Thank you. Thank you for your insight with everything. And tell, um, how, how are you handling this personally? How, how do you feel? Uh, I have my ups and downs just like everyone. Um, but I really find making the mask and having a purpose makes me feel really fortunate to have a community 
and you know we're talking to our friends more on FaceTime, connecting more, and all of those connections. I hope we don't forget that afterwards and get because we all get so busy in our lives. And I'm enjoying that I have time to see my friends' faces, you know, get to know you. Thank you. And this is, um, I think we have to look at the um, opportunities in this situation and slow down, you know, look at the planet that is probably enjoying our respite. <laughs> you know, the planes aren't in the air, the fog is going away. And, um, but yeah, I'm handling it like everyone, crying one minute, trying to laugh the next moment, just uh, hanging in there, right? Yeah, yeah. And you got your two, don't you have two cats and a dog to keep you up? I have two cats and two dogs. I have oh, two dogs. <laughs> uh, and they must uh, be the best therapy and the best company right now. They have right? no idea what's going on. They I just on me at home all the time. <laughs> um, there's one up there. And one just sweet. Sleeping. Yeah. Uh, God bless them. And, and God bless you, Karina. And please tell everybody where we can find you. And where can we find the masks that you make, please? So um, you can take a look at karinadresses.com. Sign on to our newsletter. You get a 15% discount. And for the folks that sign on over this weekend, we're going to give some free dresses away. Um, there's a page telling everyone what we're doing with the mask. You can contact us um, if you need masks. We want to get them to you. Anybody who wants a mask, we really want to help you. So just email us from our website at kareenaddresses at gmail.com, and we're here for you. Thank you so much, Karina. And for the free, the addresses that you're giving to my listeners, thank you so much. So they'll go ahead and subscribe onto your uh, website, and they'll get a hold with your people. Is that correct? That's right. So what we're going to do is we'll look at all. Oh, I forgot one very important thing. Please. When you subscribe, there's a little box that says, I came from a radio. So we know that you're coming from this show, and we're going to select three ladies that sign up. We'll announce everybody who subscribed. We'll send an email out, and we'll send you a gift card. Oh, that's so that's three people who are getting free dresses, but everyone else for their first purchase, 15% off. Thank you so much. I'm and sorry, that was a mouthful. I'm happy that I got it. <laughs> <laughs> you did fantastic. Thank you so much. You're amazing. And Thank we'll talk to you soon. We'll put everything up on our website for you. Thank you. Be well. Thank and you. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Karina. <laughs> okay, bye now. Bye. Take care. <laughs> Thank you. So now we have Jenny Beckstrom. Jenny, are you on? I am. Hi, hi, do hi, darling. How are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm very well, thank you. I found Jenny on the news. Jenny was um, Jenny is actually doing another fantastic thing, just like Karina. Uh, she is making masks. So I wanted to show the masks that you sent to me. Yes, those lips. <laughs> I love it. I know. I usually, I usually have to pay for stuff like this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to show people because there's a lot of controversy, and we're going to get into um, into how you started making this, but I just wanted to show people what I'm going to be doing when I wear your mask when I go out just because I'm out of my mind crazy. So I'm going to put my regular, my you know, my filtered mask on, and then I'm going to put this over this like so. Sorry. Boy. So, right? So that's going to that's going to be how I walk around because yes. this this will prevent from me touching my face and it is cloth. So I remember watching the ABC the news um, the reporter had said, well, how, you know, how effective is it? You know, right. how did you, how did you feel about that when they they spoke about that? You thought it was important, right? For for us viewers to know. Yeah, I think that sometimes people can have false like beliefs, right? They're thinking, mm -hmm. oh, um, if I wear a mask, everything's going to be fine. And I can just like go about my day normally. But in reality, having a cloth mask is kind of the last resort, right? But it is something. Um, so yeah, I thought it was important for them to for them to highlight that and talk about it. I love it. Thank you so much. Now tell us how did this all get started? When did you start doing this? Yeah, so I started doing it like two weeks ago. Um, mm -hmm. 
I am a creative and I was like, oh, I'm going to be locked in quarantine. What am I going to do with myself? Mm -hmm. And I hadn't even thought about masks. I was like, ooh, I'm going to make hats. I'm going to make bucket hats while I'm in quarantine. But then, um, then things started getting real and it was Friday night and I remember like I saw like an Instagram post of someone making a mask and I was like, oh, let mm -hmm. me watch this video and see like how easy it is. I was like, oh, I can totally do that. So mm -hmm. I like posted on my Instagram. I was like, if anyone who's an essential worker wants a mask, let me know. I can do it because I had the fabric and I had the elastic. And my local um, Instagram, I live in Astoria, it's We Heart Astoria, have a ton mm -hmm. of subscribers. They reposted mm -hmm. it. And like mm -hmm. the next morning, I woke up to so many people wanting a mask. <laughs> and then the business began. <laughs> Oh, I love it so much. Now you're, you're giving these away with the exception of you're making this, you know, you're doing this with the kindness of your heart and you're yep. just asking for the shipping. That's yep, all you're asking yep. for. So I am, I'm making it, I am sourcing fabrics, elastic, all that. And then they just have to, to give me $4 for shipping. I love it. Now, um, how is this, do you think this is helping you during this quarantine? Do you think, you know, are you keeping you a little bit sane and, and keeping the anxiety level down because you're One, so busy? 100%. Um, because I also have a job job. So now I have two jobs. And wow. literally, my mind is just so focused on making these masks, you know, tending to my clients and like, just being like, super creative with everything. So it's definitely helping me. I think if I had nothing to do, I would go stir crazy. I would be looking at social media all the time, probably getting super anxious. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I'm not like that. I'm very like, okay, this is what's happening. And we're just gonna have to get through it. This is amazing. Now, are you in fashion at all? Yeah, yeah. So I'm a designer. Um, so I basically just do like one off pieces, people commission me to make dresses or um, like things for different events. So mm -hmm. so yeah, that that's what I'm currently doing. Um, so that's kind of why those are a little funky and a little, you know, pizzazz. I love it. You know, if I didn't want to wear like this, I can actually wear this just plain. Exactly. So it's reversible. So you can, you know, if you want to wear lips one day, you can. If you don't, yeah. you don't have to. <laughs> I think I think it's going to make people happy. And you do a, you do a lot of designs. Yeah. So I actually um, have the people pick out their fabric. I have like mm -hmm. five different fabrics. First of all, it's hard to source fabric these days. So I'm trying to find the best. Um, so yeah, they pick their fabric. And then I'm like, do you want initials on it? Do you want like a smiley face or lips? And then, and then they customize it. And a lot of, a lot of people are getting like their initials because there's a lot of nurses. Oh, or like their RNs. Um, and yeah, they just kind of like want to make people smile when they're doing this. That's really nice that you're actually customizing things and you're taking your time to do this. Um, I, I hope that people are donating, you know, so you, you know, cause you're, you're struggling as well. I'm sure just like the rest of us. So yeah. Yeah. Is, no, people have been so amazing. Like yeah. the donations are just great. And without it, I couldn't keep like, it going to be honest yeah i love it and you bring you give us this little bag here and you make it very easy so if anybody wants to donate um wh where can they find you on on yeah that? so uh, find me on instagram hi harry design and then okay. you can message me for a mask or if you want to donate there's links there as well i love you it your own custom mask <laughs> I love it so much. This is so cute. <laughs> it looks really cute. <laughs> uh, Jenny, you're the best. Thank you so much. You're, you're an angel. So thank you so much for everything. And, uh, and I hope we meet again. Yes. When this all clears up, we shall meet. Yes, please. <laughs> thank you, Jenny. And thank you. You have a wonderful day. Thanks, Jenny. Have a good Saturday. Bye. You too. Bye. <laughs> thank you, Barry. Hey. Where's Barry? I'm here. I'm greeting you with my, where is he? I can't see him. Here he is. Hey. Hi, Barry. How are you? I like How it. are you? I wish you were mine. I love it so much. That was fun. How are you doing, Barry? Good, good to see you. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Barry is a celebrity photographer. And uh, actually, we know a lot of people 
who know him, um, I met him through a magazine that I worked for, and he was so gracious to give us this photo of Dr. Kelly Powers that he took. Um, this is just one of the celebrities that he takes photos of. Great lady. Yeah, she's she's a wonderful. I hope she's doing great. great. She's a yeah, she's a doctor, and uh, and hopefully we'll have her on the show soon. So call yeah, me. Right. <laughs> yeah, right, there you go. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Uh, a lot of people yeah. actually charge us, and you were so gracious to to provide that photo. So thank you once again. My pleasure. Uh, <laughs> so tell us, uh, what's your background in photography, Barry? Well, you know, I started off. I got into photography as a musician. I was, that was my first love was music. I played guitar. I mean, I wasn't professional or anything, but I just love music. And I started, realized I wasn't going to have a career in music. So I started photographing my friends who were musicians. And I realized I had an eye for it because I love music. And I just started photographing them and got a job with a big New York City photographer as an assistant. And uh, then I started shooting musicians for record companies and uh, music magazines. So yeah, that's how it kind of took off by accident, I guess. That's wonderful. What kind of, uh, what instrument do you play? Did you? I play guitar. Guitar. Right. Okay. Not right. very well, but I played it. Ah, that's good. That's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, um, for the aspiring photographers, what kind of camera do you use? I use all Canon. Canon, uh, anything Canon I use. That seems like the, the mm -hmm. camera to go with digitals. When I shot film back in the day, it was Nikon. When I switched to uh, digital, I, I went to Canon. And I think any Canon camera is great. Wow, yeah. oh, that's very yeah. nice. Yeah, and you know, it's part, part, of, part of it is about the equipment, but a part of it is about just having the right eye, too, and the feel for it. That's my philosophy. Your talent. Did you go to school for photography, or did you? I took basic courses. I, you know, I went to learn International Center of Photography, and I learned dark room at the time, and I took basic courses, but the main way to learn is to actually go out and do it, or maybe work for a photographer as an assistant like I did, and I, mm -hmm. he, I watched what he did. Um, or I would look at magazines and try to copy their style. So, and I went out and did it. And that's what, that's really the best way to learn. I think is to go out and do it. It's okay to learn the basics, but I don't know. I'm not into too much studying too much books and details. It's too technical for me. I, I'm more about feeling. Hands on. It. Yeah, absolutely. Very nice. And you do a lot of commercial photography. Um, if we can show Rosanna, uh, I have a photo of Rosanna and uh, Lori from Good Morning America. Is it Good Day? Good Day, New York? Uh, good Day. Yeah, good for Fox day. 5, New York. Yeah, so, yeah Don. Of, uh, it's more, it's a headshot's my specialty. So yeah, I do a lot for the news anchors, uh, a lot of the news anchors. There we go. Yeah, this is this is yeah. on a whole bunch of buses. Now, how do you feel when you see this on buses or, uh, you know, whatever? It's very cool. <laughs> it's like, you know, I'll be driving in New York and I'll stop at a uh, in traffic and I'll look in my rearview mirror and I'll see that one of those photos in my rearview mirror and I'll always try to take a, a shot with my cell phone you know so or I'll, I'll be walking down the street I'll see a bus coming the bus will stop and I'll stand in front of the bus and take a quick snapshot and before the bus <laughs> starts to move so almost gotten run over a few times doing that but yeah no, it's, exciting. Uh, it's exciting to see yeah it's really they're beautiful photos you make them look so they're beautiful women I mean I met Rosanna yeah. once and she's wonderful and they're just beautiful women and we have uh, Miss Megan Kelly or our next photo uh, either Ernie Ernestus or Megan Kelly, do we no, have this one? There yeah, we go. Megan. Here she is. Yeah. How, how, how is it to time. shoot? How is it to shoot her? She's a wonderful oh, she's woman, great. huh? Yeah, very nice. Down to earth, very sweet. She's uh, come to me twice for headshots, so that was nice. Yeah, beautiful yeah. woman. Um, yeah, my friend uh, Vincenza actually does her makeup. Vin do you know Vincenza? I know Vincenza very yeah, well. she's, she's, she's a brilliant wonderful make, brilliant makeup artist. Great girl. Yeah, and just like our Maureen Walsh, too, our mutual yeah, friend. Yeah. One of our closest friends and uh, <laughs> best makeup yeah. artists out there. Yeah, I love her. And yeah, then we great. have uh, Mr. Ernie Anastas. Yeah, another from Fox 5. Again, I shoot the, a lot of the news people in New York, so he's, he's a New York him. legend, so that was pretty cool. Love him. He's a, yeah. We're friends great on guy. Instagram. Yeah, he's he wonderful. He has a lot of stories to tell, too. He's a fun guy. Uh, God bless. And the last one is Eddie Gallagher, Chief Eddie Gallagher. Uh-huh. If we can heroes. just show him, yeah. Yeah, that's, lovely. A, that's a really nice photo. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. He was a, that was an honor to have him in the studio for sure. Him and his wife uh, Andrea, and his whole legal team was in the uh, in the studio. So that was that was one of my my best days, I would say. What? Um, what? Can I ask why you decided to put him in black and white with this? This is is this something that I you thought about? That a lot with the, well, I, mean, I love black and white, but especially since I shoot a lot of our heroes, our veterans, I think it's very dramatic to capture them in black and white. So I, you know, I, I shoot both, but I definitely try to capture them in the black and white, and I think that kind of captures. And he was at that time he was going through a lot, a lot of controversy with his trial. Yeah. His life was on the line, um, and uh, so I thought it was a good way to capture him. 
Now you're, you're, you don't discriminate. I know with me when I write, you know, I write um, political point of views, but I don't take my, my personal feelings in with it. I don't think that we should in our, you know, in our field. So it's wonderful because he is you know, a very controversial man. You know, how did you yeah, feel well, about- Well, he's controversial, but he's a hero too in my eyes. So it's not, it wasn't a controversy for me or it wasn't a question. I mean, I admire him. So I was thrilled to have him in my studio. You know, I would, I love having veterans or, or heroes and uh, you know he was acquitted for his trial proven not guilty so i had no problem with him being there i loved having him there so yeah yeah and you're back. oh god bless yeah he's you're very strongly about the vets and the nypd as well is that correct yeah, police police in general police uh, and the veterans they are a big supporter of both um those you know when i was when i started my thrill for me was to have maybe musicians or movie stars actors come into the studio but from for now it's uh, for me it's really veterans or, or anybody who, who serves the country, you know, law enforcement, veterans, that's, that's when I get excited. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And uh, actually, you showed me a beautiful article that somebody wrote about you. I, I believe, believe her name was Alice. She's a journalist. Right. And um, you, um, you met, did you meet sniper uh, Christopher Horton? Did you ever? No, I did not. You I did never not. met him. I just, but I just um, met his wife. And, Jane uh, Horton. Just, just became, be or Jane, and I became familiar with her husband and, uh, you know, just uh, uh, any time a gold star mother or a gold star wife, that, that I shoot them for free. So, uh, and uh, we just started talking, and I, I knew she was going to be in New York. I said, "Come in, I want to take your portrait," and she was kind enough to present me with the bracelet of her husband. Do who, you uh, have it on now? I, I don't now because I oh. guess since I'm since I'm in quarantine, since you're home, yeah. Actress, so normally, but I very rarely take it off when 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 things are normal and I'm out on the uh, you know at work or in the studio, I'll have it. Oh. On. Yeah, so. How did you feel when she presented that bracelet to you? Oh, it was emotional. It was very emotional. It meant a lot. Mm. Yeah. That's why I never, never, very rarely take it off. Yeah. So it meant a lot. It's, yeah. It, wow. It great, great, another great day. I'm very lucky. I get great people in my studio. Yeah. God bless. I, I see that. Um, you capture a lot of moments in time. So, I mean, you know, maybe a hundred years from now, your photos are going to be coming up. You never know. I mean, how does that make you feel? You might be a part of history. Yeah, it's a good, well, I appreciate that. It's a good feeling. You know, people tell me I should do uh, books, which maybe one day I will. So maybe I'll at least have books to, to leave my work behind. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but it's a great feeling. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. It makes me Are you capturing fun. anything around the city going on now? No, I'm, I'm quarantined in my home in New Jersey. So I'm staying away from New York, unfortunately. I, you know, I'm anxious to get back to work, though, because, uh, you know, I'm all about work, and I, I love working. Yeah. I love taking pictures of people. So I miss it. So hopefully we'll be over with this nightmare soon. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> and your your studio is in New York City. In yes. Twenty six. Okay. So how how is this affecting you? Like right now, nobody's in there. How what's going on? I mean, are, are you you know are you okay? Just yeah, I'm getting by every day like everybody else. You know, I'm concerned about my business, concerned about everybody's business. You know, I know a lot of uh, small business owners that are in danger of losing their business, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to hold on and just come back stronger. You know, mm. like the economy, I hope will come back stronger. So hopefully I will too, but I'm getting impatient. I want to get back. So hopefully, be, hopefully after April, maybe we can all try to kind of slowly get back to work. And you, uh, you always have makeup artists that you're always looking for for backup. So after this, you're actually going to, um, well, you have asked in the, in the past to have makeup artists to come and contact you. Yeah. So they're welcome to contact you. Oh, anytime. Any, yeah, I'm always looking yeah. for good backup makeup artists for sure. They can contact yeah. me in the studio, email, or go to my website, and they'll, they can contact me. Facebook, I'm on social media lots, Facebook, Instagram. So, Under Barry Morgenstein. Right. Oh, okay, cool. And how are you handling this um, emotionally, and uh, you know, how, how are you coping with this whole thing? Um, pretty much like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, can't, I can't show that, but yeah. Yeah, no, just, you know, I'm just kind of taking it day by day, just relaxing, getting caught up. Uh, watching classic movies, listening to music and relaxing. And, you know, so, uh, yeah, that's pretty much I can do. Trying to watch as little news as possible just for kind of updates to see when we're going to get back to normal. But I'm trying to avoid that, too. So Very good. Do you yeah. plan on changing anything? Do you think this is a time for us to change anything? Uh, as far, well, you mean health-wise or, I mean... Well, anything, like just, just making, you know, any changes. Because I know that I, I plan on making changes with myself. You know, I just, I, I'm starting to see the real picture in life. And something's caught me up in the field that I was in. So now I'm just kind of, all right, you know, I'm going to do things a little bit differently. I'm going to be more um, aware and I'm going to concentrate on things that are more important. 
So yeah, well, that, you know, that I guess you we realize all the things that we're used to just going out with friends and hanging out yeah. with family and seeing our family and friends. So uh, just going out to dinner or having a drink with them or you know. So then the obvious things like I'm always washing my hands, but now I'll probably be doing that a lot more than normal too. But uh, yeah, yeah, just more about family and friends because you're separated from them too. So that's, of, yeah, of course that makes, that makes you appreciate that. I guess yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you know, but I, back to what I'm also doing. I'm also still posting a lot of my photos on Facebook, which I normally do because I see a lot of people. Almost everybody's posting about the virus, about you know, debating this and that about the virus, and it's all bad news. So I'm just trying to, you know, if someone comes to my page or they'll see on their feed, maybe they'll see one of my headshots and make them smile, or one of my photos and make them feel good for the day. Or yes, right. so, yeah, trying to keep up doing that. They make me smile, so thank you so much. <laughs> I, I, thank you so much. I was so happy to meet you finally. After two years, we've been talking back and forth, and uh, yes. thank you, thank you so much, Barry, for everything that you're doing, and thank you for your help with the vets and, oh, and the my pleasure. Yeah. caring for the NYPD, and uh, you know, Always. yeah, thank you, and we hope yeah. to see you soon. <laughs> Great meeting. Thanks for having me on. And thank you, thank you for this. I'm going to plug Preferred Health Magazine awesome. one more time. <laughs> Good. Nice, Dr. Kelly. Yeah, thank you. Beautiful Good. photo. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate okay. it. Great thank you. you, Barry. Be safe. Bye. Thank Bye -bye. you. You too. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm going to go ahead and uh, tune off because uh, we're going to just get other things going with uh, the radio station. So thank you so much. I wish you a wonderful week. And uh, please be safe. Uh, this week I'm going to have a psychologist on. She's going to give us some information on how to keep us calm. And I actually interviewed my little baby nephew, Shane. He's 10 years old. He's going to give us his perspective on how he feels about this whole coronavirus. So thank you so much and have a good day.